Hello all. One of the things I'm attempting to focus on anymore is better organization, a reduction in time, especially on manual processes, whereby I tend to automate anywhere that I can find to reduce that time. Because honestly, time is a commodity that everyone is currently provided, but it's a commodity that can never be retained. So with that being said, I'd like to make this video in reference to batch or a bat file. And I want to look over it and provide an example of how I utilize this each week. So a batch file, what I want to do is I want to cover what exactly is a batch file. And I, I want to also identify some of the resources that you can utilize in order to create your own batch file. And I will also provide an a method to acquire a template on the batch file that I currently use each week. We're lying that it would be the example that I'm going to show you exactly what I use it for, what it does, and why I do it. So what is a batch file? By definition, a batch file is simply a computer file containing a list of instructions. That's all it is. It's a sequence of events or tasks that you provide in a code that automates the process that you would normally do on a manual labor. What's really nice about a batch file, especially within the Windows environment, is you can write it up with the simple free notepad. And honestly, that's a lot of what I do. I'll either use the Windows notepad or the free version of Notepad++. And I can provide links to those as well underneath the video or as a reference to get you that. In the past, we used the command prompt and the DOS commands in order to provide a lot of our usability with our computers. While that is not actually used so much today, it still remains available and relevant. So in order to get to that, simply go into your start run command and then you can go in and hit CMD, which will open up your command prompt. And this will allow you to basically run those little DOS commands to view, make directories, remove directories, change directories, etc., etc. A lot of these commandments from the DOS command has merged over into your bat or batch file. So you'll actually see a lot of relevance similarity between the old DOS commands and the current batch file commands. Involving the sources of a batch file, there are literally a lot of available websites online in which they'll either provide samples, examples, the commands. What's really nice about the batch file is that you can make it as simple as you need it to be. On the flip side, you can also make it even more complex up to almost a simple programming language in itself. I'll provide the resources and everything to you shortly. So let's jump on to the example. What exactly am I going to show in this video? So what I do is I've created a batch file for a personal use of my workstation and I use it every week. And I am going to show you exactly what this is. Hello all. One of the things I'm attempting to focus on anymore is better organization, a reduction in time, especially on manual processes, whereby I tend to automate anywhere that I can find to reduce that time. Because honestly, time is a commodity that everyone is currently provided, but it's a commodity that can never be retained. So with that being said, I'd like to make this video in reference to batch or a bat file. And I want to look over it and provide an example of how I utilize this each week. So a batch file, what I want to do is I want to cover what exactly is a batch file. And I, I want to also identify some of the resources that you can utilize in order to create your own batch file. And I will also provide an a method to acquire a template on the batch file that I currently use each week. 
zipper line. That would be the example that I'm going to show you exactly what I use it for, what it does, and why I do it. So what is a batch file? By definition, a batch file is simply a computer file containing a list of instructions. That's all it is. It's a sequence of events or tasks that you provide in a code that automates the process that you would normally do on a manual labor. What's really nice about a batch file, especially within the Windows environment, is you can write it up with the simple free notepad. And honestly, that's a lot of what I do. I'll either use the Windows Notepad or the free version of Notepad++. And I can provide links to those as well underneath the video or as a reference to get you that. In the past, we used the command prompt and the DOS commands in order to provide a lot of our usability with our computers. While that is not actually used so much today, it still remains available and relevant. So in order to get to that, simply go into your start run command, and then you can go in and hit CMD, which will open up your command prompt. And this will allow you to basically run those little DOS commands to view, make directories, remove directories, change directories, etc., and etc. A lot of these commandments from the DOS command has merged over into your bat or batch file. So you'll actually see a lot of relevance similarity between the old DOS commands and the current batch file commands. Involving the sources of a batch file, there are literally a lot of available websites online in which they'll either provide samples, examples, the commands, What's really nice about the batch file is that you can make it as simple as you need it to be. On the flip side, you can also make it even more complex up to almost a simple programming language in itself. I'll provide the resources and everything to you shortly. So let's jump on to the example. What exactly am I going to show in this video? So what I do is I've created a batch file for a personal use on my workstation and I use it every week and I am going to show you exactly what this is. One of the things I continue to struggle with is constantly having a messy desktop on my PCs and laptops. Primary reason is sometimes I'll use the desktop as the destination if I'm downloading something to review or if I just simply put files in here in order to test those files, or I may run a script and acquire certain content and then massage those files accordingly and I no longer need them, or somebody's even providing me one, it is always seems to be getting a clutter. So one of the things that I'm actually starting to utilize is creating a bat file in order to A, move these files to a more structured folder for later review and B to remove the clean it up period quickly and easily. So let me go ahead and show you what it does and then I'll show you how I did it. So the bat files over here where I have it as just simply named as clean desktop. And once I click this, you'll see a pop up emerge with a bunch of lines as it's running through its code. In addition, you're going to see a lot of these icons or files on my desktop be removed. Here we go. Click. It's cleaning it all the way through. And then boom. A lot of those files are now moved into a more structured folder where I have dedicated to go. So let's look and see exactly how I did this. I'm going to open up the same exact bat file that I have here. And I will make this a bit. So this is a bat file or a batch file. And this is how it's going to work. And I'll also have this in the video comments for you to pull if you want to. Just use it as a template. So essentially the REM is a remark or a comment or a note. Anything that is after the REM is just something for you as a notification, a reminder 
That way, when you come back, you see perhaps how it is structured and what you had attempted to do. The at echo is a batch command. If it is turned on, you will see the pop up and it actually scrolling through as it works. If I had this as an off statement, then you would not even see a pop up. It would just literally do it behind the scenes without any visual aid. Again, the remark, it tells me these are all my Excel files. And what you see here is the copy statement. And the way I chose to do this is to first choose copy it and then delete the files out. So I copy and I give a specific where that file is located at, which happens to be on my desktop. And then I also give it a parameter. You see here that I have chosen under my Excel files, the XLSX file format, as well as the S and the CSV. Because a lot of times what I'll do is I'll pull content into a CSV format and then I'll open it up with an Excel application or a Google spreadsheet. So I copy this files that's within here and I will move them into a dedicated folder with a subfolder of Excel to PDF Adobe files. Just pulls all the PDFs and then I call it INI Adobe. And here are the publishers. I went ahead and moved it into the Adobe. Technically, I could actually copy this and put it under two lines and then delete pub and delete PDF. But again, you can do it whichever way you wish. The function is the same. You're just coding it as your preference. Now, what I've also found myself doing is a lot of times what will happen is somebody may provide me. Now, a lot of times what I find is somebody may provide me another file, which I'll put on my desktop and then review it. And it might not be in my bad file. So what I'll simply do is go in here, open it with a notepad and then just copy and paste and then revise accordingly at this point. If it's a totally different file extension that I don't currently have in here, I'll make a remark and then that way it just kind of gives me a placeholder. So later on, if there's additional extensions on the same type of file, I'll just add it underneath it just to keep it a little more cleaner. So here we go down the MP3s and the video files. Um, I got lazy on these and I'll show you how we can clean that up if you want. But the, you get the point. It just continues on and at the end of the day, what you're after is basically here's my A files and then here is all of my subfolders that I've created and all the files, PowerPoint, whatever else that you're pushing through. But what I find is it's a lot easier to keep them all organized in a macro level. And this way I just go to this particular folder and then come up here and then I can search for that specific um, file that I had originally was looking for and pull it up accordingly. Much faster, much more organized and a lot easier to keep clean in the long run. Now that we have that underway, I wanna show you something else real quick. I kind of showed you what was inside the file. I kind of showed you what the file actually does and how it operates. But how do we actually create the file itself? So let's go over that real quick. I mentioned that I use Notepad or Notepad++. And it's essentially what you're going to do as well. We know that it's a batch file from the Windows perspective. But if we open up a Notepad and a blank canvas here, literally that's all we're going to need. If I do a right click on the file and an edit, it'll open up as a notepad automatically and I'll have all my information within. I'm going to provide you the template itself in the YouTube in the description how to get to it. But for the purpose here real quick is all you're going to do is open up a notepad and paste that information in. And then once you actually put in your own folder locations and the files you wish to move and delete, choose file and save as 
And what this will do is it'll allow you to save it something other than the default on your text file. What I mean by that is a notepad will default it as a TXT file extension, but we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to name it as a .bat. So let's just go ahead and put on here yt.bat. It's also important to have double quotes on both sides of the fence here. So a double quote, whatever you're going to name it, and the .bat. Hit save. And what this will do is it'll save it into the folder of your preference, but more importantly as a batch file, not a text file. So if I was to take a peek at the extensions up here, it's the .bat. Now that we've come to the end of the video, I wanted to add some additional thoughts or afterthoughts pertaining to the batch file and some of my experience thus far. So basically on the batch file, just to be aware, the reason they call it a bat or batch file is because the file extension itself is BAT, whereas the description will actually identify it as a batch file. So keep that in mind and also you should see a little icon differentiating it between a text file that you create your own. Also, just to let you know, I am going to include some links within the YouTube video descriptions and I hope you check those out. They'll include the resource websites that has much more additional information involving the batch files and I'll also include a link in there to get a template of the one that I created here pertaining to this video. The other thing I want to mention too is I had the issue of tend to micro view things. What do I mean by that? Rather than a macro PICS PIX folder to dump all my picture formats, whether it be PNG, JPEG, etc, etc, TIFF, I used to also break them down to even more so in a micro level and I would end up having a bunch of subfolders in which I still would have to comb through to identify and find those files I'm looking for. So I had to pull back on that and try to keep it to at least down to three levels instead of multi levels. Because the reality is at the end of the day you're still going to search for that file. I'm still able to consolidate all of these into a more structured folder hierarchy and not so much on a microcosm level. Just as an FYI. On a final note, you can check out my articles and other information on my info by matco.com. I welcome you there and I also welcome any comments, requests that you would like to see on this YouTube channel or any articles that are on the website that you might find of interest. I'd be happy to look them up for you. Have a good day.